Well, we're joined now from Westminster by the former British ambassador to the United States, Sir Christopher Mayer, and here in the studio by Martha Mulyak, a Ukrainian activist living in London, and Lindsay German from the Stop the War Coalition. Sir Christopher Mayer, well, that's it, isn't it? Uh, we're not going to have any trade sanctions, and there's certainly not going to be any, any war from the West. So we have effectively said to a country like Latvia, for example, with a 40% Russian population, look out, folks, we won't be there to defend you. Well, I very much hope that it, that is not what happens, because there is a qualitative distinction between Eastern European countries who are inside NATO and those who are outside both NATO and the European Union. Ukraine falls into the latter category. Crimea, its southern autonomous region, even more so. There was never any serious likelihood that Western countries would stand in the way of Putin's seizure of the Crimean Peninsula. But when we start to look to those NATO countries who were formerly part of the old Soviet empire, who are now inside NATO, a whole set of new and different criteria click in. Because one of the bases of NATO membership is that if one country is threatened, then everybody else comes to their succor right. and let, help. Let me get a reaction from our Ukrainian guest, Martha Mulyak. Good evening. Uh, Martha, what are your fears for your family tonight in the Ukraine? Well, I think um, the clear message from Ukraine is that Ukrainian people and my family do not want to be in war. And that's what we uh, just need to be saying out loud. And also I want to say that one of a uh, member of my family is from Crimea. Um, he is living in Lviv in a different part of Ukraine, but his immediate family is still in Crimea and they are very worried. And although these people really don't care about big politics, they don't want to be in war and they don't want to be in the war with Russia. And this is what I would like to say to Today and underline that and everyone has to understand that Ukrainian people are very disturbed and scared really. Well this is quite an interesting situation uh, Lindsay German because you're stopped the war coalition but the fact of the matter is the war is not being called for by Ukrainians themselves and indeed it doesn't look as if anybody else is interested in declaring war against Russia in order in any way to restore the situation that went on before. Well I think we need to look at the overall situation. The reason that nobody is talking immediately about declaring war on Russia is because everybody I think recognises what a serious situation that would be. But we also have to recognise that we're entering I think into a new Cold War between the West and, uh, and Russia and that we've seen in the last 20 years EU enlargement, NATO enlargement right up to the borders of Russia and this is one of the things that Russia is very concerned about and the idea that the intervention in the Ukraine has only come from Russia, actually the West and the EU and the United States have been intervening at every stage here and are continuing to do so in, in what I regard as a very dangerous way. Uh, well, so, so Christopher, um, is it not a pretty poor deal that Britain's dependence on Russian money, much of it dirty, garchical and the rest, uh, it has actually brought us to a position where even if we wanted to take trade sanctions, we just couldn't afford to do it? Well, there is Russian dirty money and there is Russian clean money. There are huge British investments in Russia and these things have to be taken into consideration. What we need today is a level of rhetoric which is actually synced with the level of actions that we are prepared to take, not just uh, in retaliation for what Putin has done in Crimea, because there is no way that we are going to be able to do anything, we the West as a whole, not just the UK, which will make him withdraw his forces from Crimea. What we should be focused on is the future not letting the hideous tensions... Well, can I just pause you there? Because well, you can, we're, but we're I was just, trying to finish a point. I know, but you see, uh, you, you say, well, no way we can get Russian forces out of Crimea, but that still leaves Donetsk, it still leaves the, the coal well, mines and all sorts of places. I was going to address that if right? you hadn't interrupted me. Now we've lost 30 seconds. The point is, that the, when I talk about the future, it is that we must come up with a set of policies and measures that ensure that Putin is dissuaded, if he intends to do this, from moving into the eastern Russian-speaking provinces of Ukraine, and that he does not draw the wrong conclusions from what has happened in Ukraine for other countries contiguous with Russia which are now inside NATO. OK, give me one sentence on what could be done to prevent him moving into the rest of eastern Ukraine. Uh, a combination of uh, mediation 
undertaken at a very senior, powerful level by Germany, France, Britain, and the United States. Don't forget that Britain and the United States um, are signatories to the Budapest Memorandum of 1994, which guarantees the independence and sovereignty of Ukraine. Right, okay, let me just bring in our... So the, the position that Sir Christopher maps out is one in which Crimea is now Russian. And presumably your concern is that within that settlement, Ukrainians can live peaceably in Crimea, those well, that live there now. Well, uh, what I would like to say uh, uh, at first is that, um, you know, you, you finished with um, 1994 um, agreement pact uh, memorandum, Budapest memorandum. And I'd like to come back to the policy making future, you know, looking at the future. Now, the problem here is there may be not f no future if um, Russia invades Ukraine. This pact was um, was you know people not keeping to their promises so we don't have guarantees that in the future uh, anyone will keep to to any policies so mm. today we need to make actions the world have to stand up and I would like to say that Europe and UK and America should not be afraid right. Ukrainians were not afraid but the problem uh, is, alas I can only give you a sentence uh, or two the problem what would you do to prevent the Russians taking the rest of Eastern Ukraine anything or nothing the truth is we can't just start from this we have to look at the whole situation in the the world we have to look at the cold war that is building up and we have to say that actually that Christopher Mayer with his cynical approach to it and the governments of the West are no friends of the ordinary people of Ukraine or anywhere else well Lindsay Ger Lindsay German um, so Christopher Mayer I can't let you come back on that unfortunately I've got time uh, and Martha Muliak <laughs> thank you very much indeed thank you,